Today we'll be demonstrating Free Mill, the free milling plugin included with Visual Cam 2016 for SolidWorks, brought to you by Mixsoft Corporation. After downloading and installing Visual Cam 2016 for SolidWorks, launch your SolidWorks application either from your desktop or from the Windows Start menu. If a Visual Cam license has not yet been activated on your computer, the Visual Cam Get Started dialog is displayed when the add-in is first loaded into SolidWorks. You can go directly to running FreeMill by selecting the Run FreeMill button. You can also choose to evaluate the full product by selecting the Run Cam Demo button. All functionality is available except for saving and generating G-code. From this dialog, you can also access learning resources and activate your purchase product. For now, we'll choose the Run Free Mill button. We could create geometry right here in the SolidWorks Host CAD system. However, for this demonstration, we will open a 3D part model that has already been saved in SolidWorks. From the SolidWorks main menu, select File and then Open. Locate the Visual Cam Quick Start folder shown here. Then select the SolidWorks part file named CAP and then pick Open. Docked on the left, you will see the Free Mill Wizard. It contains a series of tabs that will step you through the process from part setup to generating a toolpath and post processing it to create a file that you can send to your CNC machine to cut the part. If the free mill wizard is not displayed, from the Tools menu in SolidWorks 2015 or SolidWorks 2016, select the Visual Cam 2016 menu and pick free mill. If you are running SolidWorks 2010 through 2014, the Visual Cam menu will be located on the SolidWorks main menu. Okay, let's begin. The first tab in the free mill wizard is called Set Cutting Direction. This refers to the axis or orientation of the cutter while cutting the part. You can set the direction to align with one of the principal axes of the World Coordinate System, referred to as the WCS. By default, this is set to World Z. The WCS is a fixed, immovable coordinate system that exists in the 3D space of your part file. The WCS is also displayed on the graphic screen. However, the WCS is for reference only. It does not directly control the output of your toolpath. If I were to select World Y, you would clearly see another coordinate system that exists. This coordinate system does directly control the output of the toolpath and is referred to as the Machine Coordinate System, or MCS. Our goal in this step is not only to align the z-axis of the machine coordinate system with the spindle of the machine, but also to orient the x and the y axes parallel to the axes of the machine tool. This part will be mounted on the table of a vertical spindle three-axis mill. This means that I want the z-axis of the machine coordinate system straight up towards the spindle of the machine. Then I want the x-axis towards the right and the y-axis towards the back, which happens to be the same as the World Z. So, when World Z is selected, the machine coordinate system is coincident with the world coordinate system. This is the default setting. This is then the correct cutting direction for the machine coordinate system for my part and this setup. Now we move on to the next tab in the free mill wizard called the Create Part Stock tab. We use this tab to define the stock material or the workpiece that the part will be made from. FreeMill looks at the part geometry and creates a minimum box that it uses as the stock material. The dimensions are shown in the part bound section here. 
In the fields below, you can change the stock dimensions if your actual stock mounted on the machine is larger than the part to be cut. With the stock defined, we can now move on to the next tab in the wizard called Set Work Zero. This tab is used to define the program origin referred to as the Work Zero. There are three options to choose from. For this part, we will choose the Set to Stock Box option. On the CNC machine, I will be positioning the stock against two locating pins on the back side and one stop pin against the left side. Therefore, the natural place for me to put the work zero is at the back left corner. So for zero position, I will select Northwest. I also want the work zero located at the top of the stock. So for zero face, I will select Highest Z. As you can see in the graphics screen, this moves the machine coordinate system to the desired location. Now, all coordinate values in our toolpath will be relative to this work zero origin, according to the axes of the machine tool coordinate system shown here. So far, we've set the cutting direction, the stock, and the work zero. We will use the next tab in the free mill wizard to create our cutting tool. Free mill supports three tool types, a straight ball mill, a flat end mill, or a corner radius mill, sometimes called a bull mill. I'll be using a one half inch diameter ball mill and the default dimensions shown for the cutter and the holder are acceptable. With the tool defined, the next tab is used to define the cutting feeds and speeds. You can set the spindle speed in RPMs as well as the cut, engage, and retract feed rate values. You can refer to the diagram in the dialog as a reference. Now we're ready to cut our toolpath. With the Create Machining Operation tab selected, we see that Freemill supports the most commonly used toolpath called Parallel Finishing. Parallel Finishing cuts across the face of the part, each pass being separated from the next by a step over distance. First, we'll set the step distance to 0.05 or 50 thousandths, and for the cut direction, we'll select Along X. Now we'll pick Generate to see our toolpath displayed in the graphic screen. And there it is. You can also perform a quick simulation to see your process stock model. We'll pick the Simulate button and there it is. You can also toggle the display of the toolpath in the graphic screen. Now that we've generated and simulated our toolpath, we can move to the last tab in the Freemill Wizard and post-process our operation. Post-processing converts the toolpath you see on the screen into a post file containing G-codes that the controller on your CNC machine will use to cut the part. You will find that Freemill currently supports over 300 different post-processors. I have chosen the Haas machine, so now we're ready to execute the post. The Save As dialog displays, allowing you to specify a file name and location for your post file. Once created, the post file is displayed in Notepad, listing the G-codes and M-codes with the Haas machine controller. If you look down through the post file, you can see that the Z-axis values are all negative. That's to be expected because we placed the work zero origin at the top of our stock material so that all cutting will be in the negative Z direction. This completes our demonstration on Freemill, the cost-free milling plugin, including in VisualCamp 2016 for SolidWorks, brought to you from Mexsoft Corporation. For further assistance, you can visit the online help supplied with the program or visit www.mexsoft.com for additional tutorials. Thank you.